Carlos comes waddling off the slope, shouting, pulling his gun. He's a fat man and doesn't move too fast. But Billy doesn't lo like the look of that uniform and pistol. He hesitates now, eyeing Carlos. And I take that chance to run back to the Reeboks. I pull the tape reel off the machine and toss it into the back of the trailer. Then I lock the airstream up and I toss the key far away into the darkness. Figure I'll get a locksmith later or just bust down the door myself. I turn around and there is Billy, faintly glowing against the dimness. His eyes are sparking with anger and he's reaching for me. And there's a flash. Then I'm shaking on the ground. I'm not hurt too bad, mostly just stunned. Billy stands over me like he's going to finish me. But Carlos fires a warning shot as he gets to the road and Billy is slipping around the other side of the trailer. I hear him whistling for Pedro. And then I hear hoofbeats. And Billy the Kid is riding away. I leave the area. As soon as I get my truck battery charged. I head up to, the no I head up to Northern California, scared but not ready to give up that tape. Might have done something with it too, like write that screenplay. But I slide right into the bottle and mostly forget about the tape. I lose my house and my truck to drink. I hit a bottom, deep down. Then I find my way to AA, and I'm six years sober now, working for a cable company, still living alone in my old airstream, thinking about that screenplay I'm not writing. But this morning, I see a strange young woman standing out by my mailbox. She's wearing a camouflage-type military t-shirt and jeans. She's got almost no chin to her. She's tanned real dark, and she has hair tied back in a dirty ponytail. I step out of the trailer, and she says to me, Billy sent us to tell you, you're to give up that tape. His mind has found you, Jack, and you cannot hide now. He said to tell you, and now you've been told. You get that tape ready in a box, and we'll come for it. Then she gets in a dusty old Chevrolet, and it rumbles off. That makes me remember a newspaper article from about two months ago. I saved it, pretty sure who they were talking about. So I go into the airstream and dig up the clipping out of a junk drawer and read it again. And now I'm thinking that when I'm done with this recording, I'm going to go to the newspaper reporter who wrote this and play this recording for him. I'll sell it, I'll sell it all to him. Someone needs to know. Okay, I'll read that clipping out loud now. The Mojave Desert News reports that an unusual clan of religious devotees has taken root in southeastern Mojave and has been confirmed by the Caliente Sheriff's Department. A number of complaints have been registered with the sheriff about the group, which is called Children of the Thunderbolt. Residents in the area complain of late-night intrusions into private land. There have been allegations of the group there have been allegations the group has raided graves of the recently interred. Sheriff Lacoste has said the organization seems to be a cult that centers around the worship of a very old man who is in a coma underground. The cult is directed by a man who is the old man's messiah, one Henry Billy Bilson, claimed to be the ageless and magically powerful. The sect is said to be comprised of about 35 young people, many of them armed and dangerous. I figure I'd better go now to the bus station with the tape and get the hell out of town so I can sell the story to the press. And I mean, and I mean, and I mean right now. I'm signing off. This recording is now... Hey there, bub. It's been a long time. You'd best turn that off. I wouldn't want to burn up that machine when the lightning comes. And the lightning's come for you, bub. Time to climb up and ride the thunderbolt.